But Havlicek steals it. Havlicek stole the ball. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Down goes Frazier. Hello, I'm Chris Fowler for Sports Century. It's hard to imagine a time when Jason and Randy weren't as much a part of our daily lives as the air we breathe. But way back in February 2004, the concept of a show that would take a new look at the old games was just an idea. These two pioneers were buried in the ESPN tape library, sleeping in their parents' basement and selling Girl Scout cookies with a $2 markup just to make ends meet. How did this idea become a pop culture phenomenon? It all began with a discount shelf and the first host of Cheap Seats, Ron Parker. Jason and I were production assistants at ESPN for years, and then we got assigned to this new show, Cheap Seats with Ron Parker, and we were doing your basic PA stuff, like researching facts, logging tapes, patting the oil off his General So's chicken, your basic stuff. Ron Parker is a lot like Ty Cobb. He's good at what he does, no one disputes that, but he will spike in the chest. He's keenly intelligent, he's funny, he's a connection to an earlier era, he backed it up with accomplishments. Oh God, my accomplishments, the list is so long. Um, well, one thing that I'm very proud of was my performance as Tebia in my high school's production of Fiddler on the Roof. Parker took the adulation as a license to do as he pleased, however inappropriate. Parker would very often say something incredibly obscene. You guys are obviously an income poops and you don't know what you're doing. That nobody could use on their microphones, and it just broke the moment. This game isn't for sissies. Dick Enberg, Vin Scully, Leslie Visser. These people didn't get to where they were by playing nice. His name elicits an awful lot of uh, conversation and deep-rooted feelings in a lot of different ways. Expectations were high for cheap seats with Ron Parker. However, less than a minute into the first show, tragedy struck. So Ron goes over to the tape shelf, and I look down and I see that his sock is down on his leg, meaning that he's not getting enough calcium in his diet, his bone in his ankle had shrunk. I knew that that leg was not going to support him on that shelf. Ah! Oh, God. Out of the corner of my eye, I'm seeing the top of that bookcase come down. And I'm thinking to myself, this guy's going to die. And I don't have a camera. All of a sudden, you know, he just crumbles in a, in a heap. And um, again, I think anabolic steroids played a role in that uh, injury. When you flip on a TV set and see a highlight of somebody getting hit in the head, uh, you know, the easy thing to do is assume, well, you know, that was on purpose. When I first saw Sandy and Raymond walk into my office then, with Randy and Jason, Randy and Jason walk into my office, I was suspicious. Conspiracy theories aside, a surprise move was made by ESPN executives. They wanted to capitalize on the twin trend made popular by the Olsons, the Coors Light Girls, and less so by Jason and Jeremy London. So ESPN decided to give cheap seats to twin brothers Randy and Jason Sklar. Many questioned the move, and Randy and Jason weren't helping their cause. So, uh... Okay, so which camera are we... Is it this? This one? An experience, you know, would make some uh, mistakes, which were understandable, rookie mistakes. Hey, welcome back. Hey, hey welcome did. back to... I can't even talk about it normally. It really gives me a headache. But, you know, what can you do? Hey, welcome hey, back to... These are young fellas probably making some of the same mistakes I made, and probably a lot of the old-timers don't understand why. 
But just give them a little rain, give them a little patience, and you'll see they're both winners. Hey, welcome to Cheap Seats. I'm Randy. This is Jay. <laughs> I'm Jason, and this is Oh, Randy. God. It was thought that it was unique enough to be able to attract an audience and make some money. But I think it misjudged its audience. We thought we had our audience pegged. We were convinced it was going to be senior women and honorably discharged Marines. Despite some missteps in targeting their demographic, Cheap Seats was a groundbreaking show, doing things no one had ever done before. They were very innovative. They were always looking for little things that they could do because they realized that that's what separated champions from losers. Innovative, inventive, adventurous, not always good. Did we invent the Telestrator? No. Did we discover it? Yes. When did Princess Leia get an honorary degree from Syracuse? Dude, what are you drawing? Cap, gown. What are you drawing? Chewbacca. Ah! That's a nice Chewbacca, dude. Okay, this one needs a new haircut. This one's on the fast track to a Russian mail order bride. And this one could stand to lose a few. Was this shot taken from the Hubble? Here's where I thought the ball went. Really? I thought it went here. We start using it, then I turn on like any football game, and I'm like, what? You obviously saw our show last night. Madden's all over the place, here, 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 and boom. Breakdowns, we came up with that too. I mean, we, we personally didn't break it down, I and mean, we called people who, who could break it down. Number one, apparently there's not one stretcher in Columbus, Ohio. Number two, how old is the guy on his right leg, 80? They couldn't get another weightlifter to help? And finally, they're holding the poor guy by the leg that just snapped. I'm not a doctor, but that can't be good for him. Back to you, fellas. Cheap Seats was a technological marvel fused with the passion and dedication of Randy and Jason, a passion that ran even deeper after a chance meeting one sunny afternoon. This was our shot, and this is something we wanted to do forever. Once we met Matthew Modine, we were kind of like vision in order quest happening. Matthew Modine was in the movie and the band played on. We cheap-seated the Stanford Cal game where Cal runs through the band. You see where the connection... Obviously, we had a lot to talk about. This is their, their dream. That if, if, if I can facilitate these young men fulfilling their dreams, who am I to stand in the way? You know, are you doing more harm by not helping them to fulfill their dream or causing more damage by not doing it? So that makes sense. No, Matthew, it didn't. Modine's advice about relaxing and just having fun had a profound effect on Randy and Jason. It was an interesting time, and the excitement around the show was palpable. Throughout your life, you only see a, f a few people that just have it. I mean, you can just see them, and you know that it's their destiny, that that's what they're put on earth to do. Growing up on the mean streets of St. Louis, Randy and Jason's road to cheap seats was one riddled with jagged glass and sharp pebbles. You look down, you can see the neighborhoods there, and just looking from the expressway, it looks like a tough neighborhood. I mean, you want to go hide if you're down there. Yeah, it was a tough neighborhood. It was really tough. I mean, when we played Cowboys and Indians, we displaced families. It was a close-knit and loving family. Their parents tried to impart positive characteristics on Randy and Jason with varying degrees of success. Jason is a pretty well-rounded individual. Um, he comes from a good family, a good background. They're all really great people, a super family. You can see that all of their uh, characteristics have rubbed off on Jason. Randy is probably somewhere in between, like most of us are. And I'm not saying he's an angel, but at the same time, he, he's not sometimes the ogre. A lot of people like to make him out to be. Well, Randy's his own guy, and he will, he's not going to be under the sway of anybody. I think we found that out. Like Voltron, their differing personalities banded together to form a mighty whole and gave them the confidence to ask America if it cared. Do you care that Steve Garvey almost ran for Senate, but two paternity suits tarnished his squeaky clean image? Do you care that the superstars remained a huge hit through the 80s until the leagues prohibited their athletes from competing? <laughs> and that today the show only includes Olympians and football players? 
Do you care that in 1995 an Ohio father was charged with child endangering for excessively hounding his children to excel in spelling bees? Do you care? Do you care? Do you care? Do you care? Do do you you care? Care that Virginia Deloney of Jackson, Wyoming, left a two hundred thousand dollar trust fund for her two cats. We understand that most of our audience never went to school, so we feel like it's our job to educate them further. We're like the Princeton Review of third tier cable sports shows. Okay, can we go back to that shot of the depressed guy in the crowd? Yeah. What did this guy do to his wife that made her drag him here? Did he, A, wear a Bulls jersey to her sister's wedding, which for the record, it did say black tie optional, or B, mistakenly record 60 minutes over the series finale of Moonlighting, C, leave their son at the mall, or D, both A and C? Ah, the answer's D, both A and C. Viewers were starting to care, and the show was almost registering a Nielsen rating. Spirits were high. They just had everything going for themselves. They had momentum. Uh, every little thing they did, they did it perfectly. I think both guys have gotten better and better, and they feed off each other. They understood, you know, no matter what the situation was, they knew what their job was, didn't make a lot of mistakes. It had all the elements. Celebrity, crime, sex, or possibilities of it, or anger about it. It had every human emotion in there. Celebrities started showing up at all our events, and uh, it got weird. It was like that movie Outbreak. Once one celebrity showed up, it started to spread like a disease. But a good disease, you know, like a disease that you would want. Well, he can fill the Look, the it's the big mute villain from Superman 2. It's short. Putt Putt Dennis Eckersley. And speaking of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, Mike Damone on hand. Man, Nicholson is everywhere. Yakov Smirnov? What the hell's he doing there? Better yet, why is he hanging out with Kurt Russell? With increased exposure came VIP status and all the trappings of glitterati that went with it. We walked into a disco and the whole place, 6,000 people, just stopped. We found we had a lot in common. Our lifestyles were really similar and the highs and the lows of it and the interaction with the public and all that stuff, you know, is a lot more similar than people might think. Uh, frankly, I don't think they care. They live their life according to their agenda and that's the way they are, and it's sort of refreshing. Their cavalier attitude on the social scene found its way into their closets. Like many celebrities, they refused to admit their own fashion mistakes, but were quick to point fingers at others. Did you notice in that last sequence, every single time they showed Earl Christensen, he had a different hat on? I know. Can we see those shots again, guys? I can't believe they tried to pass that off on the viewers. I mean, how stupid do they think the audience was? Yeah, what do they think? People aren't paying attention? It's a blatant continuity error. Totally. I know. It's ridiculous. It's stupid. All right, we'll be back with more Cheap Seats right after this. Nice job, Rand. Thanks, Jay. You are not at a picnic, buddy. This is your job. Come on! How about a little decorum, Reg? And what are they, a breakdancing trip or an indoor soccer team? Yeah, those things weren't even cool in the 80s. Yeah. I think there's always dangers when you try to take anything and push it to extreme because you're going to places of the unknown. Great things can happen, but great things, uh, positive and negatively, can happen in that realm. I would never let... Ted Kennedy drive you to Chapel Quiddick, Pam Minnick. If you were on Real World 3 San Francisco, you would probably have connected most with sensitive cartoonist Judd Winnick, Pam Minnick. They weren't afraid of how they would be perceived by the world media or something. They didn't, they didn't even know what that meant. I think people really got into the drama and the uh, excitement of watching it, knowing that at any given time, these guys could crash. There was a respect for each other. I think it was a healthy relationship. I think it was a good relationship. But were they like brothers? I don't know. They were symbiotic. They were joined at the hip. They loved to do everything together. They wanted to do everything together and took care of one another very well in the, in the, you know, in the good moments. Publicly, there were plenty of good moments and spirits seemed high. But the public adoration was driving a wedge between the brothers. Randy's new entourage was whispering in his ear that he should become the sole host of Cheap Seats and that Jason was just holding him back. I mean, Jason and I, as a 
team had plateaued, basically. We weren't going any higher. It's like you've learned how to ride the bike, time to take off the training wheels, and Jason was the training wheels. What the hell is that supposed to mean? What, I'm your training wheels? You're my kickstand. You got a problem? What? You heard me. No, I didn't hear you. What do you want me to do? You want to say it to me, say, just say it to my face. He heard me, I know he heard me. That's what I'm talking about. Training wheels. The thing I like about Coven Randy is that there's no filter in his brain as far as what he thinks and what he says. When you ask him a question, you can feel pretty good that you're gonna get an honest answer. Let's not be naive. I think his personality does enter into it. He's a very difficult guy to get to. He's got a, a tough facade, uh, a very standoffish personality, a very temperamental guy. And now it's time to give out some hardware of our own. That's right, folks, it's cheapy time. The cheapy for the least valuable player award goes Kevin, to... Kevin, can you up, not dude? do that right just now? Go We're in the middle of a thing. Just finish off no. without me. Just go. Go on what? It's just footage over the thing. Just do it. They're going to hear... Your dude. mic, dude. They're going to hear you talking on are the you, phone. This is great. Are you going to party later? Just... I was always a villain in wrestling. My whole job and my whole career was to make people angry with me. And uh, that's a decision that Randy will make. It's a decision Randy has to be comfortable with and no one else. The off-screen tension between the brothers was starting to find its way into the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Chris Economaki at the Iceland... Chris Economaki? No, it's Chris Economaki. Right, Chrissy. No, it's Chris Economaki. Right, Chrissy. Bet you don't say that again. Bet I do. Chrissy. Wait, I'm I'm well, I think when Randy said that, I think he regretted it. I really do. I don't think he meant it when he said it. He did say it. Look, I said it. I made a mistake. People make mistakes, you know? And in my darkest moment, I found God, and then I lost God for a little bit. It was interesting. I don't think that people really realized how close they were. And I have to tell you that when I watched that press conference and saw the way Randy reacted, it was stunning. I'm ashamed. I'm guilty of committing the act of saying the word Chrissy. One is no good without the other. <laughs> they both are a necessity to one another. The rapport, the connection between those two, just amazing. I wish I had something like that. <laughs> With the tension finally cleared, Randy and Jason could focus on the show. As stewards of the irrelevant, they felt it was their duty to give airtime to those who walked to the beat of a different drum. What have I done? Why don't you ask yourself what you've seen? Okay, have you seen sports? You're welcome. Maybe you've heard of the ABA and red, white, and blue balls. That was me. Homer Hankies? That was me. Let me do something for you. It's pretty cool, right? It's confetti. I thought of that. It was outside in a windstorm, and a piece of aluminum siding from a nearby halfway house hit me in the head. Turns out it was a guy from the halfway house who hit me over the head with a piece of aluminum siding. I realized that sound, that's the body slam. Superstar like his father was, that takes a lot of courage right there. So funny, now knowing that the sound is coming from a different source, wrestling just, it feels more real to me. Now firmly entrenched somewhere between CSI and coupling, Cheap Seats looks to the future. They set a goal that everybody says, geez, you can't, that's wow, no way. Not only do they reach that goal, but they're in stride and they run right past it. No ceiling on what they can do and what they can achieve. With the new season of Cheap Seats upon us, Randy and I have been doing a ton of market research. We've spent a lot of our own money on We're this. We're trying to figure out who is our core audience, and we've narrowed it down to this guy. I love this show. This is a typical Cheap Seats viewer? No, this is the Cheap Seats viewer. We need more people. No offense to you. Yeah, man, you're awesome. Come on, give me some. I have a rash. We need more people. A lot more. Cheap Seats, 10 p.m. weeknights with a new episode every Monday, only on ESPN Classic. People can and do accuse Cheap Seats of many things, but no one can fault Randy and Jason's sense of history. 
they make sure to pay homage to those announcers that have paved the way. We know we're not the first to do this, or the last, or the middle. I mean, we are standing on the shoulders of giants. You got your Keith Jacksons. This is the fourth competition. The Americans have won once. It's hot, very hot. It's so hot, the sweat on my undercarriage could irrigate a small radish farm. It is indeed very warm. Al Michaels, Howard Cosell, your Dick Van Pattens. Oh, gosh, look at all that yes, money. Yes, he does. Okay, Van Patten, come on. <laughs> Try and conceal your drooling. Yeah, he's like, I used to have money like that, but it's been a while. I mean, I still get a Spaceballs check from time to time. It's not much, but... It almost pays my utilities. You're Jay Johnstones. 1989 champion, a lot of championships. I'll just interview the guy furthest from me. You're Judy Wards. You're Ann Rogers Clarkses. That's right, Pat. And here Whoa. we are in Chicago. And that is one big, ugly banner. And here's the funny thing. She's not even wearing shoulder pads. With their feet grounded firmly in the past, Randy and Jason now look toward the future. They've learned a lot on their journey to the obscure, and they remain true to who they are. I watch these guys unfold. I watch their greatness manifest, you know, after the mistakes that they made. They're just born winners and born leaders, and they just have a, a, a special part of them that you want to be with them. I can't think of anything I'd rather do less than be with those guys. Oh, no, wait, yeah, I can. No, I can't. You take a, a Albert Einstein, Take outstanding people in other areas, and the really great ones cannot answer the question, how did you do it? How do we do it? It's actually really easy. I mean, we watch the footage and then bust on it. H. I see dead people. I. <laughs> P. We love the precious. P. Red rum. O. Kill, 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 kick. G. That's a balk. Technically, she's supposed to step off the rubber. R. She's going to go to her mouth like that. It's a balk. Balk. I. <sighs> Luke, I am your father. F. The password is crazy. F. Hippogriff. I don't know where we're going to be tomorrow. Actually, I do know where we're going to be tomorrow. But in an abstract sense, I don't know. So, you know, don't press me. But I do know this. If there are Germans riding on bikes playing soccer, cheap seats will be there to make fun of it. They have the spark in their eyes. It's a spark of freedom. Even though I don't speak their language, I'm going, I like the spark. I'd like to have the spark in my eyes. We have a rule. We will never place restrictions on how far we can go with this show. So the sky's the limit. Can't go higher than the sky. Nobody can go higher than the sky. After a life filled with minor trials and tribulations, Randy and Jason have reached their personal zenith, hosting cheap seats. Some may say that's sad. Others may say that's quite an accomplishment. One thing's for sure, Randy and Jason would say, Red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather. Ah! What? That's it! It's over! Well said. For Sports Century, I'm Chris Fowler.